So we're on our way to try to find some records. Now mind you, this was before the coronavirus outbreak, um, but my girls and I ran to the local thrift store and we found a whole bunch of records and they were only a dollar each, so I went on and grabbed a couple of them. Now you do want to clean your record with rubbing alcohol. And I personally felt um, uncomfortable ruining a perfectly fine record because they are valuable in their own right. So I found one that was, you know, quite scratched up to begin with to, um, to use as my project for today's canvas. Now I'm using uh, DecoArt Americana regular acrylic paint. And um, I'm going to experiment with different methods to find the best way to paint a record or to prepare a record. So I split the record into five sections. Um, I left one section regular, untouched, just cleaned. I sanded away some of the ridges in a section, um, and then I painted a little bit of the sanded away section. And then I left um, one regular with a coat of paint, and then I did another section with, you know, regular unsanded with two coats of paint. So I just wanted to see what looks the best. So starting off here, this is regular DecoArt acrylic paint. I made a dot on the section with, um, you know, that's just untouched. And you can see on the top and the bottom of the dots, there is like a flat line. And that's just where the paint is going down into the ridge and settling and staying. So if that would bother you, then I would suggest doing at least one layer of paint. That's what I'm showing here, and there are already no lines to the top or the bottom of the dots. So just simply putting one layer of paint on will do the trick. Here's a closer look there. So there's the unpainted versus the painted. So the two layers of paint works as well, but it's not necessary to put two layers on. And then here is the sanded section with and without paint and those both work as well too with no flat sides to your edges and then it occurred to me that if you are going to put a layer of paint on your record you probably want to protect it um, with some kind of you know spray or brush on varnish um, and the reason would be is when you go to clean out mistakes you could accidentally pull up the underpainting which just gets messy and then there's spray paint which absolutely works perfectly fine as well. Here is the final product. I did want to show you this real quick. This is that same experimental disc that I was uh, playing with and I just wanted to show you how I fill in the hole, the little hole in the record. I just place a piece of tape on the back and then I fill in the hole with paint and I let it dry really well. Now you could paint over the back and paint over the tape if you wanted, but I didn't. Um, and then also to attach the records, I've seen a few different things. I think um, Velcro probably would work. Uh, maybe I've seen people set them in little stands. Also, there is some really crazy strong uh, glue on the market that you could probably glue a little like ring or a hook on the back. And I think that would probably work as well. All right, back to it. So I went on and spray painted mine. Uh, right over top of the paint that was already on there because I really wanted to show you the results. And while there were a couple little drips here and there, they are completely flat and they don't interrupt the paint job at all. Um, it worked out pretty, pretty good. Um, the only thing I didn't like about it was the shine. I used the satin and for the video and the lighting, it makes it terrible. So that was my mistake. <laughs> Lesson learned halfway through this tutorial, I mend that. But for now, let's jump into the tutorial. I'm using a stencil on today's record. Um, now I call this my tree stencil. I see little trees. That's just what my mind sees. So I'm putting um, some kneaded eraser on two of the corners of the stencil to hold it in place while I draw on my guidelines. And I'm using a slate chalk pencil. Um, if you have any mess ups, you just take your kneaded eraser and just rub it right away and it works really, really well for this um, painting. So this is a nine inch stencil number nine, and you will find this in the Dot Art Depot. Here's what it looks like when it's all drawn on. All right, so for the tree trunk and the limbs, I was thinking brown, but then I really wanted it to be, you know, bright and sparkly. So I was like, all right, metallic, 
brown. So I looked through my paints and found this beautiful Deco Art Dazzling Metallics acrylic paint in bright copper. And what I'm going to do is place a larger dot down at the base of the, um, right in between at the base of the two larger, I don't know, petal shapes of the stencil. And then I'm going to take a smaller tool and dip it in paint as well, and then drag the paint down towards the center circle uh, of the stencil. And that's where I'll stop. And then I'm going to do that right in between. So I'm kind of eyeballing it here. I just go right in between each of the petals turn the record to where it's straight in front of you and then way you can pull straight down and you'll really be able to to line it up correctly that way so I place a dot and then dip the smaller tool and drag it down straight down and I just kind of soften out the edges there so it's kind of like a big swipe and then the next step will be two smaller dots in between those at the base of the petal and I'm going to swipe those down. So what my thought process here was tree roots. So I'm going to kind of fill it in like little tree roots there at the bottom of the base here. And then in between those, I'm going to go ahead and fill in that space with just like a little V. Uh, and that's what we're going to do all the way around. And just take your time. And if you mess up, uh, easy cleanup, no problem at all. Just take a damp cotton swab and uh, twirl it right up and away. All right, moving right up the trunk of the tree here. Um, if you have my old set of dotting tools, it would be your white tool. Uh, but in the new set, it's called the number 28. <laughs> and you can go ahead and just make a few dots going up. And then I really want the dots to go all the way to the tip of the petal shape. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my smallest dotting tool, which is a size 34. And that would be equal to a size 1 nail stylus, which is the smallest. And dot all the way from the last dot all the way to the tip. And do that in between each of the petals. So there's a row going up each side of the large petal shape. So we're basically going to repeat the same steps. Um, we're going to go right in between the little V shape of, you know, the two petals and dot, you know, one in the center and then go up one side and then re-dip your tool, re-dot that center dot and then go up the other side about, I don't know, five dots or so up and then take your smallest dotting tool or a smaller dotting tool and go ahead and dot all the way up to the tip and connect those and then again the same thing same white tool and go ahead and dot a few going up and around those odd shapes I don't have names for these so I'm just gonna <laughs> do my best in explaining this so you can see what I'm talking about and I'm just gonna dot right up and around I'm kinda hugging the curve of the shape of the drawn on design there and then again use the smaller dotting tool and dot all the way up to the tip. And I'm going to stop at the edges of any of the, the drawn on design because that whole outer rim there is going to be filled with beautiful little flowers. Now, I'm only showing you this part so you understand where my guidelines went. I am going to erase my guidelines because of the glare. I've got a satin finish on this record and it's making it super difficult for me to get the right angle for you guys to be able to see what I'm doing. So once your project is finished, then you would erase your guidelines. I don't want my guidelines stuck underneath of the matte finish that I'm going to put on. So that's why I removed mine, just if you're wondering. So there it is with the matte finish. No more glare. All is well. All right, so in between the trees, I imagine it's the sky. So I wanted to do a gradient uh, or a fade of from light blue to dark blue. So I'm starting off with a larger, slightly larger tool. It's not large, it's tiny. It's actually the smallest tool that I have in my old set is the black size. Um, and you just want to place some few random dots down towards the bottom third of the petal. Then you want to follow up with your very smallest tool that you have. This is size 34. Um, and just fill in all the space 
in between each of the little dots as well as you can. If they hit each other, that's fine. You know, it's no biggie. Um, and then you kind of like spread them out a little bit as you go up and do a few there in the middle section. Then you're going to grab your next color. This is called bright blue, Deco Art Americana color. And I do the same process in the middle. And then on the very tip, I do the same process with cobalt. So just kind of fill it in. You can pause the video here and go ahead and take your time and do yours. And it just gives such a nice, almost like a glowing effect. And I think the key is to really just take your time. All right, so now we are going to focus on that outer rim. So I know the cherry blossom trees are blooming around this time of the year. So my goal was to do um, something that resembles a cherry blossom tree. Now I know there's like, you know, massive amounts of different types of cherry blossom trees. I read online that they have five petals and some of them even have like 10 and 20 petals. Um, I do six petals. It's nothing that has to be, you know, perfect. Uh, this is just what worked for me. So, but you can do it however you would like. I'm kind of doing a gradient here in my palette. I put in three wells, um, straight white paint. In the first one, I put one dot of royal fuchsia. The second one, I did two dots of royal fuchsia. And the third one, I did three. I mix them all up. I did go ahead and add one well of pink, just the regular royal fuchsia. I did put a little tiny bit of, um, of the color next to it in it just to lighten it up a little bit. And then I have a regular white on the end that I did also just kind of swirl around with my brush that had a little bit of pink on it, just ever so slightly take off the crisp whiteness. So anyway, it's a nice gradient of pinks. For the flower, I'm going to be using my size 24 tool. You could also use your silver tool. And for the very center of the flower, I'm going to be using the darkest shade of pink. And you want to leave about an inch in between each of your little flower centers, okay? Now, six petals fit around each of the little center dots with this particular size tool. So I just go ahead and dip my tool in any of the other colors of pink that I've got there. Um, I don't even wipe it off in between because it does leave little streaks, but it's really pretty and it really looks pretty accurate actually. Um, and I just, even on the same flower, I'll do, you know, one of the medium shades and, you know, some of the lighter tints as well. Um, and then maybe even a white one or two, or just a whole little white little flower here and there. It's just, it really doesn't matter. It's however you see it fit, and it really turns out super beautifully once it's dry. So I'm about halfway done here with the flowers. And you can just do this however you like. You know, if you like more space in between your flowers and you want them more thinly distributed, and go ahead and just leave it the way it is. Or if you like it super packed and really full, then throw an extra flower in in between or down in, inside the branches or along the edges where there's, you know, only space for half of a flower. So that's fine. Just make it your own. Do it however you like it. At this point in the design, I was looking at it and I was you know, I could see it's beautiful, but it's going to be beautiful, but it was needing to connect you know, something in the center there. So I brought some pink into the center. And to me, that changed everything. It kind of goes back to me always saying that I like to repeat a color more than once, you know, at least twice or so. I don't know, it just made it cohesive. It like, it brings it all together. For the center dot, I'm using the Royal Fuchsia paint. And then you're going to go a dot to the top of that, and then to the bottom, and then to each side, side to side, like a crisscross, and then I'd place two dots in between each of those. And that makes a total of 12 dots around your center dot. And then what you're going to do is just increase your tool size um, by like a size or two, and then place a dot offset of the previous row. And I just used my gradient of pinks for this, starting with the lightest all the way up. Easy as that. 
we will finish these off here in just a moment. I am going to add a pop of color and I wanted to add some green. So I'm using Deco Arts Extreme Sheen. I think this is called Peridot or maybe I'm saying that wrong. Maybe it's like Peridot or something. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, it's a metallic paint. It's an olive, you know, darker green, but it's beautiful. I didn't want to use anything too primary because I thought this painting was really pretty and I wanted to kind of keep it classy looking. So went with this color and I'm just going to be placing on random dots of leaves, right? And then on the largest row of dots of the center, I'm going to be placing a dot with my smallest dotting tool right in the center outer edge and then continually dotting down to the base of one side then you redip your tool into paint and then you redot the first initial dot there and then you go ahead and dot all the way down to the base of the other side and do that to all of the 12 dots on the outer row of your center and then i'm going to be using um, the purple tool which is size 19 and I'm going to be placing a larger green dot at the base of it's kind of like in the middle of the tree it's like the base of the second round of trees I don't know I considered using copper here because that would really make sense but I really wanted more of that green pop so I went with the green and I absolutely love the results I think it really works well so but you know you could absolutely do this however you want um, and then there was one last added touch to the flowers if you look at pictures of um, cherry blossom flowers they have these little I don't know what they're called um, you can leave me a comment in the comment section below and let me know if you know what they're called but anyway these little speckles like coming out of the flower I don't know what they are like seed pods or something I don't know anyway I added little speckles towards the center dot of each of the flowers with that dark pink and I think it turned out so cute I mean how cute is that I love it now I did go ahead and fill out some of my edges um, as you can see here um, and I just put like a dot on the edge and then just did like half of a flower like you know three petals or whatever fit two petals or four